Hello, it is I, your little furry pal, Franklin. I am really fuzzy today. That's the first thing that struck me when I decided that today would be a vlog day. Today could be a vlog day was I'm, I'm awfully fuzzy about the face. And um, that, that's on purpose. I am trying for probably the 400th time in my life to get myself to really try to grow a beard. Now, it, the, the issue is not at all that I am worried that it will be patchy or anything like that. It's just that this is the stage that I always get to where I run out of having any kind of patience and I shave off everything but the goatee. And it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And let me tell you, during COVID quarantine lockdown, I, I have been back and forth with the beard thing so many times, it is absolutely, when, when you're a bald dude like me, um, it is uh, totally the thing that you do instead of wondering whether you should cut bangs for yourself. And so, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But so far I have not given up, and this is the furthest that I have gone before deciding to shave off everything except the customary goatee. So, we shall see. We shall see what happens. Um, but this is supposed to be about knitting, right? Like, that's why you probably clicked and tuned in. Um, and knitting, oh, guess what? Sleeves. Well, sleeve. I am uh, happily, happily, happily at work on sleeve number one of the top-down saddle-shouldered sweater uh, using the uh, knit-to-fit-me pattern that I generated at franco.com with the plucky knitter traveler yarn, which I grow fonder and fonder of daily. I really cannot wait to slip into this sweater and get cuddly and snuggly and warm, uh, not least because the true Chicago-style winter has now arrived and is in full swing, which means that it's been snowing and snowing and snowing and snowing and snowing, and well beyond that, it's also so, co so cold out that, um, you know, really, when you when you live in Chicago, your vision of Mother Nature changes. Uh, she is no longer the chiffon-clad, flower-bedecked, um, pleasant matron of my youth who was in, what was it, it was some kind of margarine? Was it a margarine commercial? Anyway, she used to come out, you youngsters will, of course, not remember this at all. She used to come out on the television and she would say, it's not nice to fool with Mother Nature, and I... Well, now I'm not sure whether it was margarine or was it a room deodorant? Like Glade Air Fresheners? Not a sponsor, by the way. Although, you know, I'm open. Um, what on earth was it for? Chiffon stick margarine? Right, chiffon fooled you. It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Okay, it really doesn't matter. That's what I decided, is it doesn't matter. Um, what I, all I really meant to say was that in Chicago, you realize that Mother Nature is not this, this uh, lovely, bosomy lady who wants to uh, hold you on her knees and dandle you and, and, and uh, you know, throw flower petals on your sweet little head. Um, Mother Nature in Chicago in the winter just wants you dead. She wants to kill you. She is, she is coming for you. And if you are not prepared and, and she will not let up and, uh, and she is going to hang around a good long time too, because this is the time of year when friends of mine in certain parts of the world start to say things like, oh, look, the first signs of spring. And we, we won't have first signs of spring in Chicago until like May. I mean, if we're lucky, I remember snow here in May. Uh, so anyhow, I'm cold. I want to finish this sweater. I'm feeling, um, feeling good about it. Fine with it. Um, it has really made me think about how I like to knit sweaters. What works best for me, specifically for my brain, like psychologically what works best for me. And I have to say that psychologically, top-down is the construction that suits me most. And I can't tell you why. I think it's, it's usually because the sweaters that I will tend to make, anyhow, the complexity is usually concentrated near the chest and shoulders. You know, once you get past the chest and shoulders, 
you know, sleeve caps maybe, if that's the kind of shaping that you're doing. The rest of it is cake. The rest of it is, you know, uh, I, there's something in my brain that says, you're in the home stretch now. Even if I have all this torso still left in it, I, I feel like I'm coasting downhill. And uh, I like that. I like that. So that is definitely a point for me in favor of top-down construction for sweaters. Now, you want some? Um, uh, one thing that I learned very early on when I started becoming a serious knitter, you have to be cautious not to assume that when a knitting authority whose work you like, who you find congenial to your approach, when they show you how to do something, they are almost never saying that this is the way to do this, this is the only way, or this is the best way. I believe more and more and more the longer that I knit, in fact, the longer that I, I make anything in any way, that there's just about never a best way to do things. Um, there are ways that you will like better that will be more suited to you and ways that you will like less that will be less suited to you and those are very personal feelings and what's more is that I find that they are often mixed feelings and also that those feelings can change just depending on where you are and, and how you are, how you are feeling, and, and what you're doing. So I, I've been thinking about this because, of course, this is the first time that I have done a top-down saddle shoulder. I've done other saddle shoulders, but never in this form, never top-down. And so I just said a second ago, oh, and psychologically it's better for me, it, it feels better, you know. Um, but if someone said, well, now is that the best way? And a lot of times that's a popular question, you know. So what do you think is the best way? Well, here's the deal. Um, psychologically, it's the best way. But on the other hand, since I have started the sleeve, and the sleeve is really quite simple. It's one of the reasons I can work on it right now and chat away to you is that this portion of the sleeve is extremely simple. All I had to do to set up for the sleeve, which has worked from the shoulder to the cuff, because we're going top down, all I had to do was undo the provisional cast on, which was done with a method that I don't use very often, but this is someone else's pattern, so I decided to use their method. It is the crochet chain cast on, and I um, got those stitches off of their provisional cast on and onto a needle, and then the rest of the stitches for the remainder of the sleeve were all waiting on a piece of scrap yarn, so they just went on to needle. And now I'm just working my way around. And um, I decided to go with double-pointed needles because they were the needles of the right size and configuration that I could find that were closest to my chair. So, yeah, see, I don't even feel like I can give you a talk on why double-pointed needles are better for small circumferences in the round than, than two circulars or than um, two really short needles that are kind of flexible, like the Addy Flexi Flips, because I've used all those things, and they've all served me well in some instances and less well in other instances. And in this case, what made the DPNs best for me is that I'm perfectly comfortable using them and I could find them. And, and that's as much thought as went into choosing to use DPNs on this. So there's no such thing as what's, what's always the right way to work. And something that I have been thinking about a lot while I do this first sleeve, and it will become even more of a thing when I get to the second sleeve, is that this top-down construction is truly seamless. You cast on at the top, you bind off at the bottom, or I should say the various bottoms. You will bind off at the end of the lower end of the hem, and you will bind off at the lower edge of each cuff. So it is seamless. But one thing that means is it's also knit in one piece. And 
I really didn't think about that at all until I got to this stage where I'm at right now, where I am making the sleeve longer. And as I make the sleeve longer, and I'm going round and around and around, oh, I have all the rest of the sweater sitting here in my lap. The whole torso, the shoulders, the chest, all sitting here. And I have to tote them around. I have to carry them with me. I have to move them as I knit. And there are different little tricks you can do, um, although all of them are more trouble than they would be worth see again, in my opinion, in a situation like this. For example, I know someone who, uh, who in working this way, likes to put the bulk onto a, a Lazy Susan, a plastic Lazy Susan that she keeps for, for just that uh, sort of situation. Um, other people I know will put the work into a very large, heavy mixing bowl, and that helps them slide the work around, slide the work around. Now, myself, I just become accustomed to moving the work, moving the work, moving the work. Is it a major issue? No, it's just one thing to consider. It's one reason that, for example, my, my all-time favorite way to do bottom-up sweaters comes from Elizabeth Zimmerman. In fact, it comes from Elizabeth Zimmerman in many books, in many variations. So you can find Elizabeth Zimmerman's bottom-up variations in, you know, I'll put links down below. Um, you can find them in Knitting Without Tears. You can find them in Knitting Workshop. It was, it was a winning formula. And so she used it and reused it and, and rejiggered it and refined it through her entire and very long and productive life. So Elizabeth's method was, was really good. Now, psychologically, I like to knit top-down. Logistically, I kind of like knitting bottom-up, because when you work bottom-up, you do the torso from the hem to the chest, and then you do each of the sleeves separately. And then, and only then, when you've got two sleeves and everything up to about here, do you join all together and finish the shoulders. And sometimes I like that too. I mean, it's certainly more convenient to carry around a single sleeve or just the center of your sweater than it is to have to carry around everything. And with the bottom up seamless method, you you only have the entire project in front of you for just the yoke, really, for just everything above where the underarms and the body come together. And yeah, so there is no best way. I guess that's what I'm saying, because that's what I've been thinking, is never, ever, 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 ever get hung up on the best way of doing something with your needlework. And I've said that a million times for for my students and classes as well. I have, I'm very proud to say, lots of students who have taken a lot of classes with me, a couple of whom even, you know, in the good old traveling days could follow me around from camp to camp and did. And um, uh, sometimes I would get this really curious comment, and I understand where it comes from, where I would be in a class with one of these students who had taken many classes with me, and we'd gotten to know each other a little bit, and then they would sheepishly say, at some point during the class exercises, well, you know, I learned how to do such and such, a, a particular knitting move or technique with you, and I like the way you do it, but then it also came up in a class that I took with, and they would name another teacher, and they would say, and I don't know, her method just kind of stuck with me best. And I would say, well, that's fantastic. That's exactly the sort of thing that a strong, curious, independent-minded knitter is going to do, is constantly be aware of your own mind when you're knitting. If, if I teach you something, it's going to be the thing that I know how to do, that I use myself, that I have done enough that I feel like it's become part of my brain, and I also will have tested the teaching of it to others, and it will be the method that gets the most people to the destination the most easily with the fewest tears, without 
without compromising the quality, mind you, of the result, but it has to meet all those criteria. Now, I will feel one way about that technique, another teacher will feel another way. And as a student or as, a, as an independent practitioner out there with your, your needles, you absolutely have the right, and in fact, I highly encourage you to make your own decisions about how you like to do things. It will make your knitting more rewarding, you'll be more confident, um, and, and you know, I, I don't want to push this too far. I don't want to get too loosey-goosey, woo-woo, wishy-washy about this, but I will tell you here something that's happened to me, which is that a lot of my life I have been a timid person. I'm still a shy person. I used to be a mousy person. I don't think I'm mousy anymore. I think I can safely say, no longer mousy. Still shy though, let me tell you, but not mousy. And part of the way that I shook off my old mousiness, which if you're a mousy person, that's fine. It did not work for me, okay? I was not happy being the way that I was. Learning to make my own decisions about something as mundane as a, a piece of knitting, as a knitted hat or a sock to the, the first time that I found a sock pattern that suggested a method for turning the heel that I had not done before. And I tried it out for a little bit and I didn't like the way the fabric was working and I didn't like the process at all. I found it very uncongenial. I ripped back to the beginning and I redid the heel flap the way that I like to do heel flaps. And it felt amazing. It's like, I, I can do that, I can do that. You can do that. You can do that. It's one of the reasons that as I put more and more technique videos on this channel, um, none of them, I think none of them are ever going to be a quick tip or a dashed off suggestion on how to do this or that. I want them to be thorough. I always want to make sure that, of course, after dealing with the video, after engaging with the video, you can do the thing that you clicked on. But mine are always going to be kind of like a little documentary about, um, you know, well, here's a sort of decrease, and here's another sort of decrease, and here's the difference between them, and here's what they look like, and here's why you might do this one, or you might do that one. That's the kind of thing that makes me happy. The more stuff like that that you know, the more independent you can become in your knitting, and the less likely you are to find yourself unhappy with your knitting and overly dependent on some authority or authorities uh, telling you what to do. Because, yeah, I guess that's the, the ultimate. This is, there's no one best way to do anything. And you get to decide what's the best way for you. And you don't even ever have to settle on a single answer to that question. You are free to change your definition of what is the best way at any time that you like. And, you know, uh, we, it's, it's easy to feel trapped in your life. I know what that feels like. And sometimes even having the ability to decide how you turn a heel or even how you are going to do your left-leaning decreases in a piece. Sometimes that might, that might be the only freedom of choice you get in an entire day. And, you know, take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. So, oh, enough sermonizing. Um, however, I would like to say that uh, speaking of, well, yeah, it's sort of a sort of a sermon, really. Um, the number of people, the reaction to um, my first the audio recording, my first sort of audio story for the YouTube channel, which was just launched a little while ago, Little Kitty's Knitting Needles, a uh, remarkable and very obscure story from 1881 that happened to be on my shelves. Um, I did not know if uh, anyone else would be as into listening to that kind of thing as, as I am in, uh, into reading it. And turns out you are. The response has been wonderful, and I just want to say thanks to everyone who has listened, everyone who has liked, um, all the new subscribers who have shown up, thanks to Little Kitty, um, and everyone who has left comments and has shared it with their friends, their guild, uh, whatever knitting groups they're related to, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was an experiment. Um, and I felt encouraged because my Patreon patrons, they, they got it first and they got downloads of it. Um, and, and, and they liked it. 
but you know, that's my close crowd. That's that's people that you know. They're they're always there in my corner. So you never know about the wider world. Well, thank you, wider world, for enjoying Little Kitty. Since you did, there will absolutely be more recordings like that that are going to show up on the channel. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, keep an eye out. Of course, I'll be letting everyone know um, when the time comes. There are already more of them in progress. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, this has been kind of long and preachy today, and I have very little else to report on the knitting front, um, aside from, well, I'm, I'm sleeving. I'm sleeving and sleeving and sleeving. Uh, so I'm going to get back to my sleeve and um, hope that you are enjoying whatever it is that you're working on, and I look forward to seeing you back here again soon. So uh, cheers, everybody. Have a nice drink if something makes you happy. A little of what you fancy does you good. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be the first to know about future episodes. Click like or leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts. And if you really, really liked what you saw, check out my Patreon campaign, where my patrons enjoy exclusive access to downloads, live streams, and other bonus material every week. Remove a provisional crochet cane, uh, crochet cane. Crochet chain, crochet chain, crochet chain, crochet chain, crochet chain, crochet chain, crochet chain.